I've got a mighty mule driveway alarm and the contractors ran over it and busted it all up. I didn't know how broke up it was. I've got a new one. I thought maybe I'd just plug it in, but the plugs are different. This one here has got a, I think it's proprietary type plug. I took the cover and glued it up and wrapped some electrician's tape around it, thinking that maybe that was all that was broke, but I was wrong. The new one I have has like a USB port on it. Looks just like a USB port. And uh, the sensor is not compatible with this old style that I have. So I thought I'd take it apart here and see if I could figure out what's wrong with it. I'm not an electrician. I've never worked on things like this before. But when I opened it up, I found there was a part broken. And I found the little pieces of the part that was broken rattling around inside. All I knew is that they were blue. I didn't know what it was. So I've got a brother-in-law that's really good with things like this, and I thought I'd give him a call and see if he could help me out. He helped me out a lot. I didn't know what this missing part was. I took a picture of it and sent it to him. He told me it was an oscillator. Um, he told me that I could replace it, but I'd have to know what the value is. And after we talked for a while, I thought, well, I've got the receiver. Would that be a matching part inside the receiver? And he said it could be. So I took the receiver apart. Now I know everybody bags on Mighty Mule. And I have a gate. I don't have a Mighty Mule gate controller. But I have a really long driveway. It's over a thousand feet long, and I can't see most of it. And so I like to know when somebody comes up the driveway. And with this broken, people have come on the property, mainly contractors, but they come on the property and I don't know when they're showing up. And this Mighty Mule alarm, it works good. It has a good range. Um, it, it's reliable. Animals don't set it off. Uh, cars will set it off. My tractor sets it off. So I like it. I had to pull the little rubber feet off of it. Then pull the screws out of it. Real easy to take apart. And then would you look at that, there is a little blue part in there, it looks to be made of the same material that the pieces I found were made of. Here's a better view of it. That is a ceramic resonator. 4 megahertz. So once I had that information, it was just a matter of finding who sold the ceramic resonators. Well, my brother-in-law told me that um, the ceramic resonator is an oscillator, but they're cheap. He said they're probably the cheapest things they could find. And uh, he told me a crystal would be much better. Well, I looked around for uh, ceramic resonators and I found a supplier on eBay that sold them. They weren't very expensive. You had to buy them in uh, packs of five. At least that was the smallest pack I could get was a pack of five. And it was about 10 bucks. And another eight dollars for shipping. But I thought if I could get the thing back together working, you know, for that, it was a pretty good deal. So I went ahead and ordered them. 
But I got to thinking about what my brother-in-law had told me, that these uh, ceramic resonators were just cheap and that uh, um, crystals were better. So I went on YouTube and watched videos of a guy testing ceramic resonators and crystal oscillators on his oscilloscope. And from what I saw, the ceramic resonator started to respond at a lower value than it's uh, specified to operate at. And it increased in its response, peaking up at around where its specified value is. And then after it passed that frequency, it started tapering off. So it tapered up to peaking around its value, then tapering off to nothing. And then he tested a crystal oscillator. And uh, there was, as he increased the um, frequency, nothing happened until it got very, very close, almost exactly on its specified value. And it started working almost instantly. And uh, as he increased the frequency, all of a sudden it just quit working. So it told me they had a very narrow uh, <clears throat> response. I got to thinking about it since uh, the one in the transmitter was broken. Um, that was the one I needed to replace. So if it had a very specific frequency that it worked at, I could put a crystal in there and whatever frequency it transmitted out to the receiver would probably be accepted by the receiver because the receiver had the or the ceramic resonator which had a wider range of response and so I thought that the crystal would f definitely interact with the uh, receiver within the range that it was able to uh, receive if that makes any sense also this uh, ceramic resonator has something to do with the code because um, this has four dip switches and you can change the code um, so that it doesn't interfere with another receiver or another transmitter if you were to have two you could have them set up uh, with different settings so I decided to go ahead and buy the crystals and that's what I have here this is a 4 megahertz crystal low profile the legs are a little long so I cut them down cut them short and uh, after I took the old legs out of the um, PCB from the broken ceramic resonator I soldered in the crystal the 4 megahertz crystal I don't have a solder remover and I need to get one they have two different kinds they have one that will blow the solder out of the hole with a little puff of air and then they have one that will suck it up into the um, device with a vacuum it's a little popper pops it right up it would have been a lot easier to uh, put this crystal in if I was able to open those holes up so I tinned the legs on the crystal put a little solder on them, coated them with solder and uh, proceeded to try to find the hole that they fit into Thank you. 
put the soldering iron on the leg, heated it up till it got hot enough to melt the solder that was in the PCB. Once the solder in the PCB melted, then it popped in. Worked it back and forth a little bit till it popped in. Then once I got that one side in, it was just a matter of going back to the other side and wiggling it till it popped in. Now I can just push it down a little bit more, one side at a time, heat one side and push on it, heat the other side and push on it, till it drops down to about the same height that the uh, old ceramic resonator was. It has to drop down to a certain level for the cover to clear. I think that should do it. Now I'll just prop it up. Dab a little more solder on it, make sure it's got a good connection. I'm using a Weller soldering station. These things are nice. Yep, that looks good. Let's make sure that the top will fit on it. Yeah, that'll fit. I'm surprised this didn't get broken up more than it is. They literally ran over it. I see there's another little broken piece in here I didn't notice before. The divider between the batteries. I don't know what this plastic is, but the super glue seems to actually melt it. So the super glue works pretty good. I'll just dab some super glue down in here. This is a medium viscosity. It doesn't run as bad as the thin. The thin will wick inside the uh, cracks of broken parts better. But this does okay. Wiggle it around and make sure it works down into the crack. There's a little dry spot in there I'm going to have to hit again. I hate getting it on my fingers. 
spray a little accelerator on it wipe some of that accelerator down over the uh, super glue closer to the other end it doesn't take a whole lot of this stuff to make it harden up and wipe it out I don't know what chemical that is but uh, I don't like to leave chemicals on it try to wipe out as much as I can there's a little LED light on this thing um, it, it lights up when it's transmitting and uh, don't try to put the screw in that hole break that LED light I don't know if it'll break the whole thing or not so just make sure if you try to do this you put the screw in the right place see there's the hole for the LED right there now all they had on this was a wire tie a zip tie to hold the bottom well, I guess it works Well, it's not as good as new, but I think it'll do. Let me get some batteries for it. Now, like I said earlier, I do have a brand new one of these, the whole uh, kit with the uh, sensor, the uh, transmitter, this is the transmitter, and the receiver, brand new receiver. But I'm not going to put it in until the uh, contractors are done and out of here, until my project is finished and they're gone and never to come back. Then I'll uh, put the new sensor in the ground and hook up the new transmitter. I take the batteries out before I hook it up. The one thing you want to remember is if you have one like this, don't drive your car down there where the sensor is and, and do this because you're going to throw it all off. You have to have an empty driveway. You don't want any big metal around it while you're putting the batteries in because it will calibrate itself. And uh, this wire that I'm plugging into it here goes down to the sensor. Uh, I believe it's about a 20 foot long cable and the, the, on the end of it, it, it has a, uh, I think it's some sort of capacitor. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, it's pretty big and heavy. You bury it a foot below the surface. Um, you can put it, you can bury it in the middle of your driveway and pave over it if you want. But if you ever have to replace it, you'll have to leave it unless you want to bust your driveway out. They recommend burying it beside your driveway, one foot below the surface, and it has a up to a 25 foot diameter that it'll sense any vehicles or large pieces of metal. We had a deer set it off one year. The deer had uh, Christmas lights tied up in its antlers. And it ran around like that for a while. I wasn't the only one who saw it. Uh, some other people I know around here said they saw it running around with the Christmas lights tangled up in its antlers. So there we go. It's back in there. Covers 
waterproof. <laughs> Not pretty, but it's waterproof. And look at that. I got a signal. When you change the batteries on it, it sends a signal, just like somebody's coming up your driveway. And uh, the light stays on to show that you had somebody come up your driveway, or at least that the alarm was tripped. And you can reset it if you want. So anyways, thanks for watching. That's it for today.